Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 19 of Podcast The Five Rings, your source of enlightenment in the realm of video games, tabletop, anime, film, and tech. Each episode of Podcast The Five Rings releases Monday mornings on iTunes and SoundCloud, and now topic by topic, day by day on YouTube, with the full video releasing on Friday. Catch updates about the podcast or for other news, give us a follow on your social media platform of choice listed in the description below. I'm your host, GM, and overseer of Podcast of Five Rings, Obsidian, joined tonight by the resident wildcard, Mal. Welcome. Welcome back, Mal. Feels like it's been a month. <laughs> Glad to be here. We got the wall that will not fall, Tetsuo. Yeah. How's everybody? Everybody is well. At least on this end. Yeah, pretty good. I will not speak for the Dark Fortune Dullest meta, though. Lest he curse me with typos. I will. Don't you? Don't even think I won't. You'll have so many typos, and you'll be like, why? I ain't gonna tempt that beast. It's okay. I'll end up typoing just as badly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some news. We're gonna be recording monthly modules this weekend. Uh, I have the last two parts of... The D&D one edited, I just haven't posted them yet, because my brain, yeah, I just keep forgetting. So those will be up soon. Uh, We'll have Pathfinder this weekend, and we're playing evil characters. Oh, yeah. So look forward to that. You get to see us uh, slum it up a little bit, like the line group that slummed it up. (laughs) We were the best line. I don't know what you were talking about at all. The best line is the line that gets the job done. Exactly. We got the job done. We got the job done. Two people yeah, died, but she got we, the job we, done. I'm, I'm telling you right now, if we ever go back to those characters, I'm going to lie my ass off and take all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> we will take the credit. Yes, Anna. yes, we will take the credit. Wink, wink. I don't think that I can try to take the credit on that one. No. You can with your ancestors. Mm-hmm. I can't believe, they believe you. Still beat that one. I can't believe we still beat that. Yeah, mm. it, was, it was rough. That roll, man. Yep. <sighs> All right, Mal, uh, let's get this thing started because we got card discussion today and it usually runs a little long. So, yeah, I mean, forever. Yeah, so we're, we're in the get, Phoenix. Let's get right into it. Yeah, we got their story last week set up nicely with uh, Shiba Sukune. Ends up being the uh, new, uh, we have, uh, she ends up being the clan um, champion because apparently they're dropping like flies. Yep. Poor Uji Mitsu. The little thing you. I never knew him. <laughs> he was actually a neat, interesting character, more based on his backstory than anything he did in the clan war, but that's I don't want to go off on a tangent. It was the return of Spooky though, which I'm yes. happy about. Yay, Spooky. Robert Denton. Uh well, he's a good a, 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 a friend good a friend of ours. Yeah, he's a friend of ours. He's good. He's a decent writer. He's a good writer. He's okay, I guess. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I liked how it started. <laughs> People seem to like him. Yeah. You know. He's okay, I guess. <laughs> I thought the I thought the fiction was good. It gave us the most like change that was kind of dynamic and uh, I Probably guess the original game. Yeah, and and that felt natural. Like yeah, the, it felt the change in it felt less forced. It makes sense if anyone to have a different kind of clan champion, in my opinion, that the Phoenix are because. They're not really tied to bloodlines, and it's all about like who the soul of Shiva chooses in the sword and stuff like that. And I got a question. Sukune for you. Who was the original? One. Who was the original champ for U- those like myself who don't know? It was Uji Mitsu. No, I Uji mean, Mitsu. and like, wait, so you mean like Uji Mitsu wasn't dead in this? And the original? He, no, he, he lives for a little dead. bit, and then he does end up dying, and Sukune takes the mantle. Yeah. I believe. I think it's on the day but, of thunder. Yeah, on the, well, it's it's like a it's like a little bit before, but yeah, pretty much during the the end of that arc. Oh. But uh, the um, the elemental masters are different. Yeah, Tadaka is not yet the master of Earth, and I believe Uona is not yet the master of Air. So, right. Huh. We still have Ujina. Ujina is one of the coolest like old characters. He's the nameless one. Basically, his wife ended yeah. up turning into a shadow ninja chick that birthed uh, Kaede, his daughter, and he's like all scarred and messed up because of it. And uh, uh, it's just he's just a great character, so I'm glad he's back, at least. Oh well, well, yeah. hopefully he lives up to his uh, his history. Then <laughs> maybe he'll get a happier story this time around. Maybe, maybe. I, I don't know because I really liked Kaede in in the last one. So 
I do too. She's still around, I'm sure. Yeah. She might. But I if mean, Ujimitsu doesn't have the the or not Ujimitsu, but uh, Ujina, if he doesn't have the same kind of bad backstory, then who knows if Kaede yeah. will be the same. Well, that, should we get into the cards? Let's get yeah, into the cards. Right I think we all, all right. I think we're all pretty positive on the fiction. So yeah, the, the fiction. Yeah. It was final a thought for me. It was fiction was good. Um, Still setting up characters. Yeah. Yeah. No big moments. Maybe the last one before they, they'll kick it all off. We got Gen Con Possibly. three weeks. Possibly. I can't it's wait to see what the story tournament prize is going to be. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see what that is. Still in the well, prologue. Yeah. Uh, first up, we've got uh, the. Ishiken Initiate, which is two fate for a one one, zero glory, not so great there. Uh, Shugenja Void, this character gets plus one uh, military and political for each claimed ring. And it's two influence. Oh yes, it's not a bad card. It's yeah, grows later in the time. game. Hope. Yeah. Or as, because it's anyone claim, not cl- rings. You, rings you claimed. Yep. Yeah. It, she's go on Tets. I was just gonna ask because it, it's claimed over the course of, of the game, not claimed in this particular uh, round. Or it, it's change, the, it is. It. Yeah, because they stop being claimed after. Yep. A, they, it reset. resets. Yep. Yeah, I was okay. gonna say otherwise they'd be really powerful. Yeah, that'd be right, super yeah, good. That's, that's um, what I was saying. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's even still good because I mean just. Obviously, you don't want to do anything whether the first turn, yeah, the first defense yeah. slash attack, the the third and the fourth is where she becomes really potent because rings are also if you just if you're an attacker and you lose the battlefield the battle the defender still claims the ring so you still get value it's literally just when they don't attack and right. most of the time people are going to attack into it anyway someone's going to get that ring so a two for a blank three three or even a four four. Well, obvi- yep. I mean, four four doesn't matter at that point, but for a three three and a two two, I mean, she's she's decent. She's not like great. I wish she had like glory one at least, maybe. But even so, yeah. I think it's I think it's just more that it's going to be a staple, um, just something to kind of give that little bit of extra um, numeric yeah. push to break things. She's a, yeah, and that's what she is because she's a good, obviously, like sneak in a personality card. Yeah, less good when she's on the field and your opponent knows what they're running into. So. Yeah. All right. She's like two influence. Yep. yep. So a conflict deck. Right. Next up is a Sako Diplomat. It's two fate for one two. Courtier with one glory has the reaction after this character wins a conflict, choose a character, honor or dishonor that character. I am so upset that this card is not a conflict card. <laughs> Want it for that crane? You want to yes. It in a crane. I want it in crane so bad. <laughs> but as we're gonna learn, though, you're really gonna probably want to be honoring your own guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know we've said this a few times, but this is the most for sure auto include in <laughs> in your deck because Phoenix literally have less ways to honor their characters than probably the crane in the line, right? Right. They and want. They kind of want it. They more. have to because they have the highest glory characters. They care about being honored because a lot of their stuff triggers off that and just having higher glory than your opponent. So she's literally one of the most effective ways to honor your characters as a Phoenix player. And she's just, think, she's just prod that's better because you can also dishonor your opponent too. I think like what also makes um, it really necessary is that like it starts to make uh, a lot of the Phoenix clan um, personalities or the characters that we have on here for the cards at least. Um, it actually makes them worthwhile more for their investment because... I mean, we'll see it down as we go down. But if you just, you know, looking at some of the cards that we've seen come out, um, there some of them are really expensive, but you don't get a lot of oomph for like uh, the cost of them. Yeah, basis they're alone. very situational or yeah. conditional, I guess is a better term. I mean, you're, you're, we're going to see for other cards, but you'll hear the, like the numbers of the cost, and then you'll hear the bonuses, and generally the bonuses are uh, almost always not equal to the cost. Well, let's get on to see some more of those cards. Uh, we've got Adept of the Waves for 2 Fate, and oh, he's 2-2, two, two, with 2 Glory now. And Shugenja, Water, Action, choose a character, until the end of the phase, that character gains Covert during Water Conflicts. Oh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> this guy's so good on the play. 
Which again, what does covert do? Covert is when you attack with a covert character, you can name a non-covert character that your opponent controls, and they cannot assign to that battlefield. Yep. Or move in, I believe. So, literally shutting down a guy. Phoenix also get access to the pacify cards. If you have this and this guy, and you're on the play, and you're swinging first, you can declare water pacify guy covert another guy and if that guy's still the best character and you win the watering you can just bow that character out and then they yep. can't attack you and they have no good options yep the guy's so good and he and even when you're not hitting water conflicts he's still a two two for two with two lorry that's pretty solid yep very nice card oh yeah moving on we've got radiant or raider three fate one two to glory. Courtier, action. While this character is participating in a conflict, if you count more current glory than your opponent among ready participating characters, choose an enemy character and move that character home. Huh. Yeah. Big effect, so small stats. Yeah, really good effect. We haven't seen a whole lot of move back into the battlefield stuff. There's probably going to be more, I bet, when we see Unicorn next week. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Phoenix I think have, we've already seen one, yeah. Yep, and Phoenix have good counters to those kinds of effects. They have ways to shut off, as we're going to see later, people from moving in. So Sin Home is a good classic, like, Phoenix honor strategy, like, defensive, and this can be used either or. Sending home, get keeping your best, your, your opponent's best characters out of the battle by any means, coverting them, sending them home, bowing them they get lots of good flexibility on that end so her stats obviously aren't that good but the ability is so strong that it makes up for them though if yeah. you can honor her she's no slouch she is yeah that's she becomes a um three, a four. three four yeah all right speaking of just stats serene warrior she's three fate for a three two Bushi, who has no ability, but he's got four glory. Four. I just we, did, we didn't think glory like, was going to go over three. Oh my right. god. Holy For, shit. Yeah. When, I, when I saw this card, I was like, oh, what? The heart's really <laughs> good, too. Oh, yeah. Phoenix Seven, might six. be averaging out to my favorite art. <laughs> Venus has got some really good art on him. So, yeah. for three, and if you can honor him, he's basically a clan champion. Stat yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's seven, uh, seven, six. Good God. Just don't get him dishonored. <laughs> then yeah, he's nothing. Exactly. <laughs> then he is nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Honored to even go. Or yeah. That's pretty powerful. That's so powerful, though. And we haven't seen a lot of dishonoring effects. So. Not yet. There's been some. We, we've got court games, I, I, I shameful display. Be... Yeah, some neutral cards, and then. Is one of the rings can dishonor? Yeah, fire can yes, dishonor. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to see yep. plenty of it out of Scorpion. So. Right. Yeah, yeah, I just, that's so powerful. That's so insane for that card. I, I love it just for the fact that it's just a giant meat <laughs> stick of nothing else. <laughs> yep. All right. And next we've got Shiba Yojimbo. A. Three Fate for a 3 2. 2 Glory. Bushi, Yojimbo, interrupt. When the effects of a triggered ability that targets a Shugenja you control would initiate, cancel those effects. All right, this is classic. Phoenix have usually always had a Phoenix Shiba Yojimbo character yeah. that you could redirect stuff from your Shugenja to. Flavor's on point. Yeah, the it's... flavor's on point. I... The stats are fun. The stability... She's just kind of expensive for me. I, I almost yeah. wish she was like a 1-1 one, one for 2 that had the ability and was maybe right. too glory. Guess, well, yeah, but, but that would make her really she good. Up. She's almost half of your fate production for a turn. But I mean, I think, honored, you're pushing like a 5-4 with her, so... I think that's kind of the point, though, because, I mean, like, she's pretty much just get down Mr. President, and, <laughs> I mean... Yeah, exactly. That kind of that kind of effect is really powerful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not. I'm not saying it's not good. I just still wish and she was a little bit half cheaper. Half of your characters in she uh, in the Phoenix are going to probably be Shugenja. Yeah, yeah. and they're going to be high targeted stuff typically. So I mean, they're going to 
she can uh I think she can even do it with ring effects because it's a triggered ability of the ring I think so if they like ring of fired you're like uh well you couldn't do it to like your four glory guys but uh to like one of your Shugenja to try to dishonor them you could redirect yeah. it to her uh stuff like that so I mean she's not bad I it's just a it's a it's a lot to when a character can get like killed and you kind of like even oh, if it's oh, like man. a two cost Shugenja or one cost Shugenja and you just lose that kind of extra fate it can be yeah. wonky at times mm, but the we'll ability is relevant though yeah we'll see all right now we've got a four costed character fearsome mystic oh baby two four one glory another shigenja there this character gets plus two glory during air conflicts mm -mm -mm. action while this character is participating in a conflict, remove one fate from each participating character your opponent controls with lower glory than this character. I absolutely hate uh, this character and everything <laughs> it stands for. What I like about it is that it makes your opponent have to think a little bit more when they see her in your flips. If they know you're going to buy her, they can't just like invest fate. On their like, on their character, they're just, they're just throwing away their fate at that point. They also can't choose air themselves, really. Thinking that's not even this. There's no thinking to this. You just if, get it and be happy. I mean, like if the moment you put it in here, and I mean, we'll touch on it later on. But there's ways to raise up her glory stat. I mean, and that's not counting her own ability to raise up her glory stats. <laughs> And suddenly everybody is like, well, I guess I'm just losing a fate point for everybody now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even against crabs, like, she didn't even need the boost, really. Yeah. No, she doesn't. Because yeah. you know what? What glory is there on the wall? Am I right, guys? It's a good, it's a good ability. A it's a good ability, and the stats are good for the cost already. So uh, it's, it's so I'm, solid. I'm it's just such a scary card. At Gen Con, even though it's in, in the side tourneys, I'm going to be playing Phoenix. I'm just calling it right <laughs> now. And I'm going to try to make honor work, and this is going to be a card that's an auto-include in my honor deck, because you're going to be going for air a lot. I just think, like, for the, just in general, just looking at this card, and this is kind of, like, where I'm coming from, is that when you throw her at a conflict, um, let's just say that you get a plus two from something for glory. That costs money to face, not just because you might have to use your own cards to still win the conflict, but because anybody you send there to defend the conflict is going to lose a fate point if they've got less glory. It's also a way to just drain honor out of your opponents because oh, if yeah. they do invest fate on their characters, they're obviously, if they want to stick around and not be stupid, not just lose their fate that they invested, they're going to want to not have them at that conflict. So she's a good swing into, well, I guess I put fate on all my guys. Maybe I don't have anyone to... That I really want to defend with in this case, I'll just have to like lose the honor. That's what I'm talking about when like she is so versatile that there's a lot of different kind of scenarios that she puts your opponent's mind into. It's just she's a about. she's a very scary character. Yeah, I mean she's pro. I'll say, I don't, she's one of my favorite cards. Oh yeah, yeah. love her art. <laughs> All right, now on to a unique character, Isawa Atsuko. Four fate or three three. Oops. Two glory. Shugenja void. Action. During a void. Is that yeah. yeah uh, void. void Shugenja. I've been <laughs> I've been relying on just the whatever kind of Shugenja they are to tell me and I just blanked because I cannot quite make out the thing on my screen. The symbols are a little small, yeah. Yeah. All right. During a void conflict, until the end of the conflict, each participating character you control gets plus one uh, military and plus one political, and each participating character your opponent controls gets minus one oh, 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 and minus oh, one. Oh, oh yeah, buddy. oh baby, that two point swing. Yeah, yeah. Void, wow. Void is one of the best rings. So I mean, she's not an. It's not an irrelevant conflict, kind of like the Earth Shugenja, where you have to already control the ring of Earth user effect, right. and Earth is probably the most situational, not always going to be gone after. Void's always good because you just sap fate from, well, you don't sap it, but you take a fate away from a character if you win that conflict as the attacker. Right. So even swinging into her after Void 
when you're it's your turn when you're on the draw, so to speak, and going second. Um, the, it's hard to swing into her because it's just even with one character and one character, it's a two four swing. You throw in more than it just adds up more. It's it's this is just a really powerful ability, and there's no thinking about this one either. Yeah, she's so they, good. They got a lot of ring uh, or ring conflict effects. Yeah, the the effects are very conditional, like we said. But oh, buddy, are they good? When the stars line up, if you meet that condition, and you have ways to manipulate it to meet that condition with Phoenix, that we're going to kind of hit on later, uh, it's going to be good. I mean, and her glory allows her to, you know, not be useless even when uh, not in void conflict. Four for a three, three is already good. It's a, it's like good, solid, and then just becomes better with two glory. Yeah. Not like it matters anyway. She's technically a four four just because of her ability. Well, at void well, conflicts, but only at void. Yeah, only at void. Right. Yeah, but I mean, you know, but I mean, outside of just void. Anywho, now the aforementioned clan champion, Shiba Sukune, five fate, four four, which is you know the lowest champion we've seen, but four glory. Yeah, and I like how she's fighting in a Puri Sode. Yeah. Bushi <laughs> champion. She's apparently in court. Interrupt. When this conflict phase ends, resolve the ring effects of up to two unclaimed rings as if you were the attacking player. Mm. She will do her best, and her best seems to be pretty good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, always getting to hit on one ring while she's in play. Right. At least. Yeah. Definitely use it towards the beginning and you know, yeah, you know, she's good. when you she's see good to put right there when you when the when the stars line up for you when you get to like airing prob maybe three times in a turn <laughs> for six honor or honor three of your characters with the ring of fire you get to do some sneaky crazy stuff uh she's she's good just the four glory is really strong to make her an eight eight she has she's potentially better than Yokuni. They're both, like, have to see, like, Yakuni has to have someone with a relevant ability on the board. She, you have to have, like, decent cards in hand, or maybe hope your opponent doesn't swing at you twice, which they're probably going to if they see you securing play. It all depends on the board state, but uh, they both are really strong, so. Pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. Also love her art. Yep. Her art's fantastic. Um... Not much to say about her ability. Her ability's just awesome. <laughs> mm, well, now we move on to attachments. Uh, we've got the Magnificent Kimono, which is zero fate for a zero one boost. And it's an item. Attached character gains pride, which is after this character wins a conflict, honor it. After this character loses a conflict, dishonor it. Uh, you better be careful. It's only one influence, yep. too, actually. So, decent for honor and crane splashing. Yep. Uh, high risk, high reward, though, because you don't want your Phoenix guys to get dishonored. You better win no. that conflict. Yeah. It, it matters less if it's on, like, a glory two or one, but on your threes and fours, you do not want it. You gotta be careful. Yeah. Very double-edged. But it's also only one of the consistent ways to honor one of your characters, so... It's kind of like a, you're almost stuck with running it, at least out of base set. It seems to me, because Phoenix are obviously going to care about being honored with their high glory stats. Well, I think as long as you, I mean, technically, as long as you attach the item, um, and then you don't even have to pay anything, you just throw it on there, as long as you win the conflict, then... It's a good, yeah, it's a good, like, my last action in the conflict, yeah, I already exactly. know I'm going to win, or if I need that one more <sighs> skill to break the province... Or even just win the conflict. <clears throat> you so. just need to win the conflict. I don't think it'll break the province. Or do you, does the winning of the conflict come before breaking a province? You can do both. And uh, as long as you have more skill than, your def- than the defender, or as the defender than the attacker, you win the conflict. And you have yeah, to even meet... Even if you don't break, right? Then, yeah, then you additionally... Ha- and you still resolve the ring if you're the attacker and you still won, even if you didn't break the province. Ah, okay. And yeah. then... Okay. No, I just, I'm going to make sure for order of operations here. Yep, and then yeah. you, and then if you have more, then you break the province as well, so... 
Then yeah, I would just throw this thing down at the last second. I'd be like, bam. Yeah, it's not a good. I'm walking into this because then your opponent's right. going to go. Well, now I have incentive to defend against this. So yeah. All right. Now for our preview card. Spoilers for Earth. One fate for plus one plus one. It's a spell and it's Earth. Attached to a Shugenja character you control. Action. During a conflict, bow this attachment. Opponent characters cannot move to this conflict or be played from the hand until the end of the conflict. One influence. Oh, baby. That is good stuff. Your best first action. Yeah. This is one you unfortunately have to kind of like mask to your opponent because you don't want to play it as the first action to attach it to one of your Shugenja. You kind of want to have it beforehand. Also, an ability that you can be that can be used from home. Oh yeah! So a really solid card versus Lon and Crane, who have lots of guys they play from hand that are pretty good. Uh, I expect lots of Scorpion as well. Yeah, probably yeah. since they're going to be very sneaky, sneaky. So this right. is just super strong. People who splash Phoenix are probably always going to splash this card if they have Shugenja in their deck. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I can see this being Run and Crane a lot. Oh, yeah. Definitely would throw this in a crane. The ability to make people not come to my battlefield is awesome. <laughs> mm. All right. Now we've got an event for Zero Fate. It's Supernatural Storm. I think my favorite art for yeah. the Phoenix. It's really good. It's a spell and it's water. Action. Choose a participating character. That character gets plus X... Uh, military and plus X political until the end of the conflict. X is equal to the number of Shugenja characters you control. Ooh, it's so good. Oh, uh, yeah. As we said, probably half your deck's going to be Shugenja. Yeah. They don't have to be at the battlefield either. No. Nope. Just, the, just the first thing just you target. Under your the control. Dance. So good. That's bloody insane. Oh, one influence. Yeah. Definitely a good sneak surprise. Yeah, probably another card if we have the Phoenix uh, Crane mashup that'll get run. Right. Yeah. Probably make an entire deck out of Shigenja. Uh, or uh, maybe not in core. We'll see. Yeah, probably not. I don't think there was any uh, conflict card Shigenja out of Crane, at least. Oh, yeah. I think they only had two or three uh, Dynasty Shigenja, so. Oh, well. Uh, now for Way of the Phoenix, Zero Fate event, philosophy, action, choose a ring and an opponent. That player cannot declare conflicts of that ring's element this phase. Max, one per phase. <laughs> oh, so good. Uh, this is, a, this is good anti-dishonor meta because you just go, nope, you're not firing me. Uh, right. If you're up against other people who probably care about honor or at, or at, are at low honor and need to build back up, you can say, nope, you're not getting air ring. Uh, you probably don't care about earth, honestly. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> water, if you got big units, you don't want them to get cut off. Uh, I mean, just just really good because you can adapt to the board state a lot with this card. You, it's going to be pretty apparent to you based off the games I've played what your opponent's going to swing after, especially if they go first. This is just a good, like, all right, before we get to conflicts, nope, you're not doing that effect this whole phase. And then I'm going to do it to you, because I wanted it. What? And it, it also uh, steers people away and towards conflicts that are the the top that your Shugenja would be as well. Right. So you can, uh, true, so yeah. if you don't have the Void guy out, but you have, like, the Earth and the Fire guy, you can cut off, like, Void or something, because it's probably one of the best bets they have. And then... They have to think about swinging into you and then leaving fire open for your for you to honor your characters with or air to gain some honor and so on and so forth. I'm a big fan of this I, uh, card. I gotta state though, like the uh, the art for this one actually uh, isn't all that great to me. Out of the philosophy cards, it's cool art, but it's eh. very simple. Yeah, it's fun, I guess. It's because it's got a hinge sheen on it. That's why you don't like it, right, Meta? <laughs> That's exactly what it is. I just I, I can't stand those types of things. All right. 
Next is display of power, two fate event, spell, fire, reaction. After you lose an unopposed conflict, cancel the ring effect of that conflict. Then you resolve that ring effect as if you had won that conflict as the attacking player. Claim that ring. Oh my this card god. Is bullshit. So good. Oh, you ring of fire what? to dishonor my clan champion? No, you didn't. She's honored now. <laughs> It is the dumbest fucking card. All that work you went through, it means yeah. nothing. And all all the rage I've seen uh, from fr from me playing the game has been when uh, you slot your swing into a ring that you wanted and the province flips <laughs> and it ends up you switch the ring or you negate it completely and turn it off. I just love that Phoenix get to do that on so many of their cards. This is like the most heinous one of them all. You're damn right this thing costs too fate to do. It's freaking... <laughs> This is like the a rage inducing card because it doesn't just cancel it. You get to use the effect and claim the ring. I, you know, I think the most angry part is is that like the moment I see a phoenix, just a phoenix player, just sitting at two fate, I'm like, son of a bitch! I know what's going to happen. He's going to do it. He's going <laughs> to do like, it. Why are we even fighting? <laughs> I might as well just lose the conflict. It'll also probably feel pretty good to uh, honor your pride character with this after it's been dishonored for losing. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. More rubbins. All right. Next up is the Phoenix Province. Kuroi uh, Mori. Kuroi Mori. <laughs> yes, as they said. Four strength. Action during a conflict at this province. Select one. Switch the contested ring with an unclaimed ring. The conflict retains its type. Or switch the conflict. The conflict retains its element. Ugh. That is a mean, mean yeah. card. All the all the rage that uh, Obs was just talking about. Yeah, it's too boiled down to one province. <laughs> yeah, so you can switch the ring, yep. or you can. I'm swinging with all my military guys. I'm Krabby McCrab face. Well, now it's a political battle. <laughs> yeah, Ugh, it's so and now bad. I defend with my good political guys. So yeah, that that can be bad. The worst thing about the card is that it's void. Right. Which is bad for Phoenix because shameful display province is a void. The card that lets you honor a participating character and dishonor another. Mm -hmm. So it cuts off some Phoenix honoring tech. Still, that's only once a game. But the ability yeah, is good still. It's still a good I card. I don't care if it's once a game. If that's you, the nasty once a game. Yeah, if you're Phoenix and you care about breaking provinces as your win condition, this is probably going to be the card you play... I think there's an argument to be made. If you're trying to honor run, the shameful display might be better, but I think it's close. I mean, I, I think the only thing I would honestly say is that I would love to just hit this card early on and not later in the game. Well, this this you can province, use it every single time. Yeah. As long oh as you no! Province. Yeah, it's good. I forgot it's a province. It's, no. even, it's even better than those because I think those are just reactions too. So it only happens the once. Yeah. This, uh, yeah, and if you think you can win, you could even switch it to, like, you know, fire. Well, like then I'm never attacking mm -hmm. that province again. Yeah, pretty <laughs> it's, much. It plays into the whole defensive theme. Because you can yeah. claim rings and resolve their effects without even attacking. Never so going it, there it, again. it makes me feel like they're the clan that has the best chance at winning honor. Which is why I'm going to play them. And then get crushed by Scorpion Dishonor Tech because yep. it's gonna it's probably gonna be the complete antithesis and counter to this deck. Watch it. Crane with Scorpion where you just negate events. Yeah. All my events. <laughs> I don't do them. No. Take that, Abs. You your cheap Kuari Morty. <laughs> It'll happen. That's always because I played honor decks all the time, constantly. I always get like kicked out of top eights or just like raffle stomp by dishonor decks. Setting yourself up for disappointment. Yep. Hey, man, I, I wouldn't be a lion if I didn't. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, Last one, man. Yep. Last one. Wrap this up with their stronghold. Isawa I Mori it. Seido. Yep, it's my favorite stronghold. Plus two strength. It's a shrine. Uh, action. Bow this stronghold. Choose a character. That character gets plus two glory until end of that phase. 11 honor, mm, mm, mm. 7 my, fate. My, my glory 6 Sukune says hello. You know, right? Uh, no, what's <laughs> even great about this card is if your guy has dishonored 
people, you can give them plus two glory to give them an even further f- skill penalty. Yeah. It works yeah. both ways. That's why this is my favorite stronghold like when so the, far. The, the zero glory crab that doesn't care about it being dishonored. Well, yeah, then you just glory your guys. See, this is like, oh, oh man. Well, then you pump them up to two glory and they got weaker is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. They don't, they're like, oh, you dishonored my character. I do not care. And then you just... Now I give him glory. It's, no, I care. Oh, I, I honestly feel like Phoenix is a much better defensive deck yeah. than uh, Crab was, which yeah, I yeah. do not like. <laughs> that makes me upset. Actually, you know what? It's kind of frustrating to see this, is that, like, how potent um, their glory is. And maybe it's because I haven't seen the crane in a while. Maybe I should yeah. just go back and look at the cards. It's weird because they're such but, um, It almost feels like... It's it's weird because they play defensively almost better than what it feels like the crab, and they play glory and omner better than the crane, crane and the line, or at least that's what it feels like. Yeah, crane and the line. So yeah. I'm sitting here, I'm like, what? Is, why do we have these clans in this game then? But have to this see is how again, it all works out. Yeah, exactly. It just comes down to like I would wait to the game to truly give opinions yeah. on it. They don't I have. Like the... Go on, Ted. Sorry. I was just gonna say that I feel like there that there's a bit of a constraint happening when it comes to fate with them though like you have oh, a lot yeah. of guys that are like four and three fate yeah they don't like have so yep. they're not a lot of their stuff is not cheap they already spoiled to one cost people but that's it like everything yeah. else was yeah started at two and up so when you're know, thinking about dragon and their uh, fate manipulations they could really wreck some havoc i think with them. they have they, they have ways to, to balance it out i think phoenix actually matches up well with dragon because they have lots of big unit like problem solve tech where I just covert your guy, I bow your guy, I send your guy home. You don't really have a way to get back in. But the the thing that Dragon do better, even though they have higher fate costed characters too, they also have ways to like get fate off of right. the rings and stuff and other stuff. So yeah, they kind of can mitigate it a little at. bit. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought he was saying. Uh, Phoenix don't really like have a way to do that. Yeah, there is the uh, know the world card where you can switch and then claim like the the fate off of a ring that's unclaimed to help you out but that's late game so yeah i'm guessing their their defensiveness comes from them being the pacifist and not wanting to attack whereas crab have to defend but then still fight the things that they're yeah. Yeah. the crab are more yeah. counter punchy so right. they're they still want to attack you I can see Phoenix X where you don't necessarily always attack every single time yeah coming they can about. be a little bit yeah. So in that in that like kind of explanation, they are more defensive, I guess. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm really happy. Uh, I love the the ring manipulation stuff. The ring stuff is still kind of like my favorite part of the game, and that they get to do that, and that they seem like they're the clan that's going to be easy to honor with out of the bu- the base set, and thematically in art, uh, they're my favorite so far, and that's just how I'm going to play more than likely. So. Really happy. Well, I see out Phoenix. Cool. All I'm right. Glad you're happy. <laughs> uh, you sound so glad, Mel. 